out to the landscape. And oftentimes we just go through the floor because people have a crawl space that you can crawl around in. Um, he doesn't have that under the washing machine. And we talked earlier, and he can't move. He doesn't want to move the washing machine. It's in a special place. It has to stay there. So we have to figure out how to get the water. And we can't go into the slab because the slab is four inches of concrete. So, um, do, what do you, does anyone have any ideas on what they should do? Well, it's the, my washing machine in my garage, the rain water goes into a tube. Yeah. It's not actually connected up. Yeah. You know, it's just, you just, it's like you can pull it out and go. Oh. So that's about, what, three feet off the ground? Yeah. So that gives you room to, if you wanted to, I, I don't know, where's the front of your house? Over there? Yeah, this is the street. So he can actually run a pipe out in the wall inside the garage and over the slab. Is this a garage? That's where the cars are driven, the car park shop. The washing machine's in the garage. Yeah, well, they, they made a, a false wall here. right here. And that's where the cars are driven. Yeah, well, they, they made a, a false wall here. right here and, and made it sort of an interior corridor. But this was all garage originally. And then they put a little bathroom in and a washing area, utility area, and a sliding glass door out to a patio here. here. Anyway, uh, the only way to get from here to the backyard would be to go straight back through the wall, uh, 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 take it down uh, to the floor, and it's up against this wall, which is up on a crawl space. So the slab is, is, is maybe two and a half feet lower than the house. So I can just go back under the house and then outside. All right. So, what do you th so this sounds like a possibility. Actually, First of all, that, that little opening that it you know hooks over, first thing we're going to do is take that corrugated hose, we're going to stand it up, and we'll put a three-way valve onto that. So now we're going to have a valve, and we're going to have the option of garden, sewer. And so when we say sewer, it's going to, we'll have a separate pipe, and that pipe will continue and go down the pipe that you have now, where it's going. And then we're going to give it the opportunity to go through the new pipe, and we'll go down the wall. And it sounds like what we're, what is possible to go through the back of this wall, and then we'll be in the crawl space. Is that right? Um, and so depending on what is in this crawl space, oftentimes there's a bearing wall, so there will be um, another another block wall that's holding up the house. Uh, so either we can go this way and go out the wall. Um, to use less pipe, we'd want a diagonal to get here, but it just depends what it looks like under the house and what's possible. Um, so let's say this is the shortest run. We come out here, and then we have to figure out how to get into the new plants. But first, we have 100 gallons of water. What are we going to do with it? We want to know what do we water. The design part is most of this is plumbing and it's pretty simple. The tricky parts about gray water is connecting all the dots and making sure this is a successful system. And so, if we have 100 gallons of water, what can we irrigate with that? And how much do those plants use? So, what would you think you'd like to put in to um, um, tomatoes? Tomatoes, okay. Lots of how much water do tomatoes use? Hundreds of gallons. Hundreds of gallons. Hey, would they use a gallon a day? In the summertime, ten gallons a day. Really? I would think so. If you could get a plot that's say uh, fifty by uh, sixty, and uh, you would you would turn the hose on and, uh, and let it go for uh, two two hours uh, every other day. So okay. I, I don't think this will will, will do away with my need for water. Okay, so there you have it. These are tomato plants. And so now he's going to send his water to this area. Um, what we, the Art Ludwig, the simple low tech version for watering something like this, is this pipe would be the white one inch PVC pipe, and then you would transfer to irrigation line. It's solid though, it's not drip irrigation, it's just a solid tube. And so you'll run this underground. But once it gets to the tomato plants, you can dig a trench and you, it can even look like a snake. And so the water will go into that trench and the trench is filled with mulch. And so uh, the 
water is just going to pour into those areas around the plants, and the plants are going to tap into the soil and the mulch, and that's how they'll be irrigated. And so this, there's a, there's a few other, you know, fittings that would go with the irrigation line. There's some barbed tees and uh, uh, transition fitting when you go from PVC to the poly line. Um, but basically, I mean, that's a gray water system. It's designed, so it's, it's pretty simple for the washing machine. Um, Is there a, when you run a washing machine, the water that comes out, is there like fibers in it uh, from clothing? Well, one great, yes, there is. And a, a, a great thing about this system is this is a one inch PVC and a one inch poly line. And so you're not decreasing the size of it. And when you make your turns, instead of making a turn, a sharp turn like a 90, you want to use a 45 and a 45. So you're allowing the water and the lint to move through all of those corners. And so we would do that on all of straight out into the mulch basin and you'll see it build up in the mulch. And so one of the things I recommend to people is that you replace the mulch once a year. Because as mulch starts to get a lot of water and it's breaking down, it's becoming soil. When it becomes soil, the water doesn't move through the mulch. And so if you if you remove that and you replace it with new mulch, the new mulch is going to be larger chunks and then the water will be this couldn't go directly into a soaker hose because the soaker hose has tiny holes. That would fill up instantly. You would have to do serious filtering before it went into the soaker hose. Um, one of the things that I recently found is gray water drip line, though. And it's, it's gray water drip line because the openings are much larger. The regular drip line is too narrow. That would fill up soaker hose when you plug with this. Uh, how, how big are your openings on your poly line? Um, the poly line. It's, a, it's, it's one inch, and so it stays one inch. And so this is going into this area. So let's say that's your plant. And so this is a one inch poly line. Oh, so it's so just th one output. Yeah, it's, it, there's no emitter holes along the line. Well, you could if you okay. wanted to have, uh, once you get into this area, if you wanted to have your pipe move through here and have openings, you could do that too. And those would also be one inch. So to avoid filtering, you want to have all of your openings stay large. Because once you start decreasing them, that's when things become. When you go to filtering, then you've got to, you have to think about cleaning the schedules for cleaning. Don't clean the bathrooms. It, it backs up. Yeah. It backs up. Right. It messes up. Yeah. Yeah. One system I did, uh, I had this, uh, I bought a nice looking trash can, not a regular one. out of screen and so the water would drip and then it would go in a hose and so all you had to do is lift up the lid and you could clean this basket. Very simple. Uh, you could also put a pantyhose on the end of, end of, end of that. Uh, but uh, I had another client with this pantyhose thing and she didn't clean it and it backed up in the house. So this is pretty narrow and a little risky. Something like this you could forget about longer. Really tipped off and things like that. Yeah, so the whole maintenance, you have to think about um, you know, how much maintenance you have on, on your brain water system. Um, I kind of jumped into this. Do people have other questions? Like, are you interested in the. Uh, yeah. If you're using like uh, washing water as the brain water, do mm. you need special laundry? Yes, so that's a big issue. Um, so. Some extra chairs over there. Biocompatible. Bio There's a lot of greenwashing going on in the market. So a lot of things say that it's uh, you know, safe, no phosphates. Often when they say no phosphates, they take out the phosphates and they replace it with salt. So you have to look for sodium. There are some sodiums that you can tolerate, some that you can't. So I'm just going to tell you.
tell you, bye, Dr. Bronner's. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bronner's? So, Dr. Bronner's, Bronner's the um, laundry soap is called Sal Suds, S A L S U D S, and it has four ingredients. It smells like pine. It works great. You need a tiny amount. You can buy it at Henry's, um, or Whole Foods. It's a local company. It's uh, Dr. Bronner's. The office is based out of Escondido. They manufacture it in LA, but they bottle it. Yeah, and if you 
if you're doing it yourself, it's free. So it's the, it's the best buy in town. And I don't know. Has anyone heard anything really bad about the greenery most of the post? Yeah. So some people really diss it, but um, from people I trust, I've heard it's okay, and I've been using it for years. Four years. It's definitely, yeah. uh, it's definitely gonna get yeah. rid of all the junk that yeah, so really it's like. Yeah. So it's out. Yeah. Uh, it's fifty second in Conway. It's just the, 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 the highway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just the dead end of Hanway. Well, I've used it, um, but it didn't seem to hurt my fence. Yeah, I thought it was fine. I heard someone say it was a carpeting garden, so it's great for trees, but it's not so great for garden. You might, what you're doing, you want to use a compost in an establishment. Okay. So, yeah, very good weather. Yeah, right. The food berry. Um, so what else? Okay, so let's figure out what we're going to do here because, you know, it's over tomato season. We still have 100 gallons of meat. If we put in an avocado tree, we could, you know, put in a three-way valve here and then uh, winter comes and we divert it to avocado, but, uh, and then we come back to tomato season when we're sending in and tell your avocado, just wait six months. I'll get back with you. <laughs> At the hottest time of the year. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's an issue. That's in, you know, this is one of the reasons that I recommend that people use gray water on fruit trees is because then you have that same amount of water all year long. And one of the things uh, that I would do is uh, this would be zone one and zone two, and so I would have. So bleach, and then you know people think they're gonna always take showers and baths, 
and it'll never be an issue. But you know, sometimes people take an Epsom salt bath, and if that Epsom salt went out, your landscape got destroyed. So, um, so you have to have a valve that's visible. Um, when the gray water is released, they want it to be covered with two inches of cover, so that can be gravel or mulch or you know, whatever. Those are the two really clean ones. I've always used mulch. Well, there yeah. is a great system except for the loss of water. Yeah. It's the reason you're garden, it's not a problem. 
you said, yeah, it's great. So of course the water that you use and you're going to reuse it, so it's, it's okay. And you've got the fish in there, and they've got the fish droppings, and they're kind of the water is giving the chlorine out. You know, it just drips in there. I put a little, I put a little uh, quasi puddle head on the outside of it, so that I have the little tube because the water constantly dripping out of it. Okay, so it's okay for now. <laughs> So, I mean, just to like, we, we really need to think about the big picture in the long term, and we live in a desert, and how, what's going to happen, and so... Um, right. So, this system, yeah, um, just for the indoor parts, I have a little kit that I sell for $200, so it's the valve and instructions and, you know, all that, and then... Um, and then some part, you know, the more PVC and valves, I would say maybe another 60, 100 outdoors. Digging the trenches is the really hard part. Uh, if you went with trenching and the pipe underground, if you went with the uh, drip, the gray water drip irrigation, that would be 200 more for that. So, um, I would say between, you know, three and 500 for parts. If I install it, I charge about a thousand to do something like this. It, it depends, you know, sometimes the homeowner wants to dig the trenches, but they don't get around to it right away. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I've been, I've been installing these for a year and a half and no one has called me back. I went back to put rain tanks on the house and it's just so successful. The trees are amazing. So it's, and we were lucky that we had a slope, so as long as you have a 2% slope, you can do these gravity systems. You don't need to make a sump to the tank and a pump. Yeah, if you have, so when you start adding filters and pumps and complicating the whole system, that's where it could be expensive. And there are a lot of new gray water companies popping up that are selling these new cylinders that sit in your basement and filter and control everything, and they're just unnecessary. What if uh, you think that uh, the water that comes from your washing machine just isn't enough? That you need more gray water? Um, then you do the shower. Um, so you do the washing machine. Yeah. Bring your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what you need to do is match up. So this is my laundry water. This is my shower water. And this is the amount of plants that I can grow that need water, everything else in my yard is going to be native or succulent. So that's what I, you know, I, so now I'm doing landscape design and that's what we do. And then you can have, you know, zero potable water going on to your landscape. Uh, most of the clients that I have or the people I meet with, they have a trash can or a bucket in their shower and they're collecting, just collecting warm up water and calling it out. The, yeah, that's a great way to start gray water right away. Is just put a bucket and collect the warm-up water from the shower. Um, um, and then I have this little fancy rain barrel that I sell. And you know, so if you if, and the people carry the water now, they put it in their rain barrel, and so they have this clean water in the rain barrel that they can use when they need to. It's one of the things that I think you know starts to bother people is they're carrying their water to their back door and they're throwing it in the same place every day. And so, it's easy if you just put it in a rain barrel and then use it for the water. They add to like that too, but instead of coming to the house looking for water, you go to the rain barrel. Okay. And then you probably die on top. <laughs> Floating on top. Convoys and minutes. What else? Demystifying gray water. So, does it seem nasty? Like, do you not want to use gray water because you're like, really gray water? Everyone's over that. Good. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people, well, the city, the, you know, like the whole state, our whole culture um, is kind of afraid of that. So, okay, so let's, that you're all okay with that, let's move to composting toilets. What do you think of that? <laughs> I've never seen one. So there's a, there's a lot of things on the on the about composting here, which is still, and they've been doing a lot of experiments in the That's something that people do every day, multiple times a day. So the book is called, um, um, what's it called?
would die and she would accuse us of peeing on uh, <laughs> Well, there's maybe the, the uh, as you go and look on YouTube, there's a whole a lot of uh, uh, films on it talk about how the neighbors are wondering what your secret is with beautiful flowers and beautiful plants. Uh, you don't necessarily tell them, but uh, <laughs> our avocado tree is blossoming more than we've yeah. ever seen it before. Because we kind of neglect it because it's water through the tree. It just survived without Did much help. Did you put urine on it? Yeah, we constantly put it on the, around the base. Get yeah. him on <laughs> <laughs> so, this is, so here's a great topic. So this is a wasted resource. So this new, new, nutrient rich, rich resource we all have access to, and we flush it. We don't just flush it. First, we take the water. We spend 20 percent of our energy to move water from Northern California down to San Diego. It goes down an open aqueduct that at least 200 communities dump their crap into. And then we bring it into the city and we spend millions of dollars cleaning it. And then we put it in our toilet, perfectly clear water. But well, even if you have a low touch toilet, you're using a lot of water. You know, families, you know, multiple times. There's the old saying for urine. If it's yellow, then it's mellow, and if it's brown, flush it down. That's right. Leave it alone. That's right. But well, yeah, what did that's you wasting. It's actually fertilizing. Oh. What are they doing in Mexico? I, I haven't seen it myself, but I think they take gray water like, from their seats and they don't have the tanks fully like fill all the way with water that's pulling. And when you go to the bathroom, you think that a bucket of water is going to the sink and pour that in. It, help, it helps flush the stuff right. down. That's right. I have been, these ladies I work with, they just renovated their bathroom and they said, but leave the pipe cut. And they put an orange five gallon multiple bucket under it. So all their water goes into the bucket, and then they flush their toilets. <laughs> in, in Europe, you can buy yeah. toilets with a sink on them. So you need yes. a lot of the things to flush your yes. toilets. Yes. That yeah. water is just going over all the toilets. If so I had the slideshow, you all could see one. <laughs> so the other thing, so let's get back to composting toilets. My other favorites. So, so how much water to flush a toilet? Is it 1.6? Well, that's for the old. So required was 1.6 in the now state. It's, so, yeah, it's so, it's so, so you have to have a low flow. But now they make several different kinds of um, like tipping toilets that just tip uh, water. I think it's 0.6 gallon um, pressurized toilets, dual flush toilets. So we're getting all kinds of different kind of toilets because we really like that idea of flushing a toilet. But a composting toilet is um, uh, it's, it, it composts the waste and, and there's several different there's several different kinds. Some of them, let's say this is our building, we had a composting toilet here. The waste would go down. Uh, and then you would have some sort of an access here so that you could collect this waste. Um, often the tank is large enough that, that when, you, uh, when you go to the bathroom and you put sawdust mixed with it, it starts to break down the waste. So after one year, maximum two, that, so that waste is turned to soil and it's super food. So it's like the best compost that you could put on your plants. And I know someone in Mission Hills who's been doing this in his house for 10 years. Um, would this work better as an outhouse than um, It would, because, but, you know, we're in San Diego, we might go to an outhouse, but most people are not going to go to an outhouse. The, the photo that I had in the side showed a composting toilet that had trays. Uh, so let's say, you know, this is the toilet. And it had like, it had these 
little drawers. It had these little drawers, and so you could take the drawer and put it into some kind of container that you could seal. And, you know, especially like that big white drum that I like, a 55-gallon drum. If you could just put your waste in that, close it up, and set it aside for a year, um, you know, it's not going to smell. It's going to be breaking down. Nobody's going to be bothered with it. Um, because I think in our, I think in our lifetime, I think we, have, we really have to see where they, people take our greenery away and they take our trash away. I think we have to set up a system where they take this waste away as well. So like traditionally they used to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so we, you know, we have to have some sort of a cooperative uh, uh, arrangement where this waste gets reused because this is the most wasted resource that we have. You don't have to worry about uh, like bacteria or viruses or anything because I know, like, I know a lot of people compost, but I know you can't compost like dog food or. That's why you have to wait two years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's where, after you've seen all the videos on YouTube about compost and toilets, collecting urine is really simple and really clean because you don't have to store it. You, you know, it's actually better if you use it fresh than stored. It's a really easy thing to use. It's not, uh, you know, you just have to have collecting containers. And uh, that's, that's much preferable because there is a problem with, uh, with disease, bacteria, you know, uh, with, with human. And that's even, that's even, there's even a problem with animal compost. But the most important thing is that if people do this, they don't do it properly, they can pass on diseases. Whereas if it's done properly, it's fine, but you just can't. So I feel like doing this, I want to do it, and I'm going to dump it in my garden, which is what a lot of people would do. Right, and then there's also biodigesters. So the, the other, biodigesters. So biodigester um, is where this waste, this waste would go into some sort of uh, uh, engineered system where the waste would break down and if it was a closed system, methane gas would be what would off gas. The methane can be used as a gas and as a fuel that you can use um, for cooking or for heating or for energy. And so, uh, biodigesters, we're going to see this. Like, like every house should have a biodigester. Here and then the mulch is like a sponge. Just soak up all that water. 
It's a foot deep, one foot. Yeah, one foot, but this is 25 surface, so it's like five by five by one. And that's where my laundry water goes. Uh, and it's a, it's a year old. It's, it's, it's still pretty good. I'm going to replace the mulch just because I want it to you know, not be so, much, so compacted. Do you have experience with using uh, kitchen sink water? Kitchen sink, so kitchen sink would be against the law. Right. Like they don't even they don't, they don't even consider that gray water. Um, uh, yeah, you could do you could do the kitchen sink. You'd have to be you know like he said. Uh, we have to be really really careful because you would have food particles and they would go uh, septic. saw them loose, then you'd need a uh, powder couplings and Ys and uh, no hub fittings. big valve mm -hmm. to make sure that you could switch it back mm -hmm. to the uh, to the sewer yeah. because things are going to jam up eventually. Yeah, yeah you'd want to have a clean out. Yeah. Uh -huh. That sounds pretty complicated. It's a little complicated. I have some, I have plumbers that I work with that are When you get into the shower system, it's a little more risky. Yeah. See, with the washing machine and having the visible valve accessible right there, that's easy to do. But when it's a shower system, to make that valve accessible, um, it's a little, it's a little more It's either a trap door or going in from the outside and through the uh, access panel on the outside of your house. Which is a yeah, or there's different ways you can run it. Yeah. Maybe a hole through the floor with like a little <laughs> T thing I could stick in. Yes, oh. yes, there you go. I haven't done that yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make gray water and rainwater beautiful. So, you know, our plumbing systems look great, our rain systems look great. Because if we want people to jump on this bandwagon, we have to make it look really good. Yeah. 
but that's, that's yeah, that's what concerns you know the municipalities and the, and the government is that you know they think that we're just a bunch of hippies, um, and, and it scares them. Not that they should be scared, because you see, I love composting toys. I would just compost it and use it in another part of the garden. So what kind of filtration do you use if you decide to put a filter on the emitter for like emitters or polyline or from a sink or whatnot? Um, the, gray, the, drip, the, gray, uh, the drip irrigation for gray water comes with a filter system, and so that would work. Um, uh, Have you used just like a metal screen, like fine mesh kind of? Are of your final drip line. Are you right. About using drip? I'm just I'm just wondering if I wanted to use drip or use it from a sink or something like that, what kind of filters you'd recommend. Yeah. Um, you know I've been doing this low tech. I haven't been doing filters except the project I got permitted at our house is pretty complicated. I wanted it to be complicated so the city would have to so I have a surge tank, it has filters, it has a pump, so the water goes through it and then it pumps it out to the trenches. Um, and then my valve is before that so I can turn it if I wanted to go to this tank or if I wanted to go back to the sewer or right. the house. My valve is there. Um, and so that's a series of like six different filters oh, well. that came with this. Huh. Um, this is an engineer tank. And then do you, how often do you have to... You know, screen is a good idea. I think um, you could try landscape cloth mm -hmm. because that's made for water to go through. It's right. very fine. Um, uh, you know, shade cloth, anything that's going to be durable. Uh, I would make sure that you spread the load, you know, so if you have something... So if it start, the sediment starts to build up here, it can still go to the sides. The problem with having something narrow is it's going to build up and then the water can't go through. Right. The, how often do you have to, re to clean out your filters? It depends how much you use them. Right? Right. So how often do you have to clean it out? Um, I am going to clean, it's a new system, and I would suspect once a month. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, but I'll watch and see, you know, and it depends. If it, if it turns out that it's too much, I might get a better little basket to go in the bottom of my shower. Right. So I can filter it right away. Right. So, oh, marketing. So I have business cards in so the rain barrels. It's rainthanks.com, like thank you, rainthanks.com, and there's a lot of thanks, thank you. So a lot of the stuff we talked about, you'll see some images. Um, I have some systems. I have some of these bulk areas you can look at. All kinds of rain catchment, like rain. I was surprised how many people want to pay to store rainwater. But you know, this was before Japan. Now that we're after Japan, you might want to keep some water. Not to be gloom and doom, but it could happen to us. So we just have 50 gallons. Well, there's a rainwater storage that's It's a lot more expensive. You have to pay as much for the tank if you're really Yeah, it's because. Rainwater catchment is in the memory or in, you know, people can handle that. Rainwater is just too weird. Because I tell people.